So um, I, I work obviously on the biology of aging. I'm not in favor of it. I'm trying to fix it. And I always start with this question. Why is it so difficult to bring the health problems of late life under control, given how much success we have had over the past one or 200 years in bringing diseases of early life under control with very simple measures like just figuring out that hygiene is a good idea and, you know, mosquito nets and vaccines and such like. And um, most people think that it's this. They, they think, well, so many things go wrong with us late in life and they go wrong at more or less the same time. So they exacerbate each other. So it's just the sheer complexity of the whole thing. And that is part of the reason, but it's only part of the reason. The real reason comes down to a problem of definition, a problem of people getting the definitions of the um, relevant phenomena wrong. The first definition that people get wrong is the distinction between diseases and aging. Most people think of it the way that I'm describing here on this table. They'll say, well, there are various types of disease like infections and congenital diseases and the big one, column three, the um, diseases of late life, which are chronic and progressive. And then most people think there's this separate thing called aging itself, which consists of these rather nebulous phenomena like frailty. And they think that there's such a fundamental difference between those, the, the types of disease and aging, on the other hand, that, you know, aging is almost off limits to medicine, even in principle. 